Hello, everybody. Welcome to Club Fitting Chronicles. I am Josh, and as you can see, uh, a little bit different background for me. It almost looks like I have a floating head. A floating head. No, I'm currently in my car. I'm on the go. Uh, my laptop is dead, so I'm recording this on my phone. So if it sounds way better than it usually is, I know what I need to do for the next episodes. And you set up a ring light, get a whole thing going. But I'm joined here with Gene, per usual. And Gene, we got a lot of great topics of conversation tonight. Um, we got this time of the year, we got all the brand new drivers and technology, breakthrough technology from these companies this time of year. Yep. It feels like they're always breakthrough this time of the year. It's always yeah. on the same days, same time of the year oh, yeah. where they come up with something fantastic. And we're going to touch a little bit more on that to come, but we're going to also touch base on our last episode, which was about grips. And Gene, you have something jotted up for our viewers here. Could you uh, go into detail what you were thinking about that? Yeah, just um, I know the topic, you know, get a grip for a lot of you was, oh, why do I want to listen to grips? I think it has been, it was one of our better episodes. People underestimate the importance of their grip. And we talked about how, you know, if the club is moving in your hand, spinning when you hit a shot out of the rough, you're, it's because of the way you're gripping it. And probably then the size is too small for the way you're gripping it. And if your grips wear out, your hands are moving, that it, there isn't a gremlin sitting in your bag chewing on the grips. Um, it's your hands. If you, you don't know that, though. Of, yeah. you well, don't know maybe. This, though. And, and, well, it could be pack rats, but <laughs> um, but probably not in the snow. No, um, no. But, but one of the things that, um, you know, as a, a golfer, you know, if you're going through a grip or a grip, a, a golf club every two or three rounds, your hands are moving. The grip size is wrong. If your hands are moving and your the face is moving and you're trying to hit the ball straight, Good luck. I still had the same yeah. glove now for the last couple of weeks, three weeks. But it's a fresh glove. I wanted to, you know, there's nothing that feels quite like a fresh glove. But, I mean, there's there's no mark or black yeah, mark. How many balls have you hit? I mean, I've played five, maybe four or five times a week. So, and, and I hit balls before that, too. So, I mean, hundreds of golf balls, you know, close to thousands a week. So it's a lot of golf balls, a lot of wear and tear, hypothetically, for a lot of these people that I haven't really, I mean, I i haven't gone through my old glove, even the one that I switched from. I mean, it's still, I could play a round of golf with it and not give a damn on what it feels like because it's the, it's the same feel as what it was before. Yep. Compared to a couple of years ago when you had a smaller, or your grip size was smaller. And you'd go through a new golf glove every, yeah, every week and a half, two weeks. I mean, I remember, you know, my parents. I like the Kirkland gloves, yeah. so every every other Costco trip, which was you know every other, you know, week and a half, two weeks, uh, they would pick me up the little four pack of their gloves, and I would I would go through them like crazy. And people can debate, oh, whatever, there was a cheaper quality leather that could be, no. no, no, because I played Kirkland even after I changed my grips and I started to notice I had an abundance of Kirkland grips, uh, or excuse me, gloves, um, just because I wasn't going through them as fast. And yep. even during the summer, I don't really have sweaty hands. I know there's a lot of people that get sweaty hands, but even then my gloves were still intact through the summer i mean you have you know little black marks towards you know my palm and where my fingers are just because i'm you know you're gonna sweat in a hundred yeah, and probably minutes. because you don't wash your grips regularly exactly. so you got some dirt on there exactly yeah so i would just encourage you if you didn't listen to that episode i would really encourage you to do so um there's a lot of good information there the second thing Blew my mind, and I want to talk to you real quickly about it. Played golf a couple weeks ago. Guy shows up on the first tee. Um, we have three carts. They say, well, you can't take three carts out there. You only can have two. So the guy gets out of his cart, gets into the other cart, because he knew the guy. 
And the starter said, where's your bag? He said, I, I don't have one. Well, what are you going to play with? And he holds up his putter. And he played the entire round of golf with his putter. First tee, he was on 500 yard par five. He was on the green in three. Hit his tee shot about 210. Hit his second shot about 200 and hit a, a kind of a little pitch shot with his putter onto the green. Worst part of his game was his putting probably. I think he three putted from about 20 feet away. Played out of the sand. Number three was short-sided. Ball down at the bottom of the trap. Pins probably 15 feet onto the green and down in that corner. Pops it out of the trap about 10 feet high. And the ball lands and stops about 10 feet from the hole. Has, have, has a shot on number 10. He's behind the trap on the left. In the rough. Kind of, it was in the green, the green grass, not the dead or dormant Bermuda. Ball, the grass was pretty long. Pin was like um, short left. Popped it up over the trap, dropped it on four feet away from the hole. Shot an eighty-four. Playing with his putter only, and I really encourage you guys to look him up. His name is Anthony Griggs. He has won some uh, a tournament in this area, in the Phoenix area, just playing with his putter as his only club. I, Of course, me being a club guy, my first question to him is, is that a 17-4 or 4-31 steel putter? And he just kind of looked at me with, I don't know. And uh, I said, well, if you were using a Scotty Cameron or something like that, it would probably, it would snap on you after a couple of swings. And he goes, you're right, it did. <laughs> because it's too soft of a metal. But he's using, a, I think it was an old Wilson putter from prob probably late 70s. He, yeah. Yeah. He, 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 he bought it. His, his bag of clubs cost $2.95. His one, his one, cl his one club. <laughs> so um, look it up. Anthony Griggs. Um, fascinating. He, he decided golf wasn't hard enough, so he thought, I'll try something different. So, golfers, we know you guys that listen to us regularly. You're not like the average golfer, hopefully, who goes out and buys clubs because so-and-so is playing them. But you have friends who do that. And you need to, like, in love, slap them upside the head and say, stop that. It That's stupid. You need to play with clubs that fit. I was doing a little research for this episode. Rory. He, I, I love Rory. Got to play tailor-mades like Rory. Rory gets $100, $100 million for the next, over the next 10 years for playing tailor-made. Why does he love tailor-made? Well, I can think of 100 million reasons. You know, um, I used to play golf with some uh, tour players back in California, and they played the clubs they played. Why? Well, back in the 90s, it was for $300,000 a year. And there were two sets of those clubs that he had, and he owned both of them. The rest of us couldn't have bought those because they didn't make them for anybody else. Uh, I've worked on other tour players' clubs, and... They didn't look like anything else, you know, that I've ever seen on the market. It had some of the same markings, but it was altered significantly. So, warning, just because your favorite player plays, it doesn't mean you should, unless you swing exactly like him and they fit you for them because they get fit for them. Right. So... We did a little deep dive into what's happening in 2024, and so we're going to just kind of run through some things for you. The yeah. brand new breakthrough technology, game changers. These yep. products are going to change your game. And you, just ask. I will make this clear. Uh, we are not bashing or saying anything bad about these products. 
Um, I personally have hit one of these new products, and I'll say it was the Paradigm AI Smoke, the the driver, and we're gonna get into the the infographics and and all that stuff that they're marketing with with Callaway's marketing campaign and what they're trying to promote for golfers and whatnot. But I will say now, um, most of these products, their whole marketing scheme, and it's it all comes full circle. The the common theme really comes down to how are these companies marketing these products? Right. And, and they have to because they're, they're, they're oh, no, a lot no, of them are No public. doubt about it. Yeah, they got to no sell new it. stuff. They have to. But there is a lot of people out there, uh, and I will say newer golfers. I mean, that's a given. But people who are avid golfers that don't see into it and buy because, oh, my gosh, it says on the back of the package. It'll do this, this, and this. Oh, are you swinging like the robot that they're using the, the, for the mm-hmm. testing? Or, I mean, I, I mean, truly. Yep. But yep. Um, the AI smoke, if you like it, by all means. I personally don't like it, and I will get in. We will get into that here in a little bit. But I just want to have a little quick disclaimer before we get into some of these products. Yep. We are not down talking them by all means no, you guys they, can spend they, your money how you want but we rather just give you the the rundown on what they're actually trying to do and hopefully save you money because 10k yep. the 10k drivers they've been a thing <laughs> yep <laughs> and, well, and the other thing is is if you're old like me the the market the the new product came out every two years okay now the new product comes out every six months because they got to sell and it's fine if, okay, I broke my driver. I need a new driver. You go looking for a driver. Great. But don't expect that the new driver is going to be able to do something that the old driver couldn't do unless you were so poorly fitted for it that that was the issue. Cause the legal limit, how fast the ball can come off the face that was achieved many years ago. So you have the 10K. So here's a driver face. Moment of inertia. This is the 5,900 gram centimeter squared number that Nike had their 5,900 driver many, many years ago. And what it's designed is when you hit it out here on the toe, the head doesn't deflect as much. Part of that is is having a 460 head because I'm moving the weight further away from the center, so it's harder to twist it, okay? Hit it in the heel, it it still will shudder. That shuddering of missing the sweet spot, that that head of a a pin right about there, missing that, you you automatically lose that shuddering of the head if you watch it on slow motion on the Golf Channel or whatever. It's just it's losing energy. The ball isn't going this fast. The new number for the 10K is measuring this way, okay? So if I hit the ball slightly above or I hit the ball below, the head won't do this as much, okay? Now, there's only one minor problem for most of us humans. If we're not swinging like over 110, 115, We can't get it to do that because there's this thing called a shaft that goes in here and it kind of restricts how much this can turn when you're hitting it at 90 miles an hour. Say you're you're hitting your drive 230. You're only swinging. You're swinging about 90 miles an hour. Hitting it above that center of gravity. I got to do it consistently to get any gain from this. And what it's going to gain is a little teeny tiny bit less spin for the guy who's already swinging at 110, 115 miles an hour or faster, who gets too much spin because of that. You and I, believe it or not, if our ball spun another six, seven, eight hundred RPMs, probably is not going to change anything. We don't hit it hard enough. It won't matter to us. But the 10K, it's it's a market. Again, it's just a marketing thing. It's real. They have to be able to show that that's the number 
you know, they can't just throw it out there. But to race out and buy one and think I'm going to get all this extra forgiveness? No, not going to happen for well, the. Not only golfer. that, but one of the one of the first drivers that has 10k, uh, believe it or not, was the Ping G400, and a lot of people still play that driver. I was talking with a guy on the back of the range at Los Colinas and he's pretty into club fitting and uh, knows his stuff when it comes to, to clubs. And uh, he was talking about on the champions tour, Bernhard Langer still plays the G 400. Mm -hmm. And whether that's because of the 10 K or not, I don't know. No, and I, I don't care, but it's probably because he likes the look. But and he I will say the, that the reaction. from having a G410 driver, the G400 and G410 being pretty similar, um, the G400 line of Ping drivers are amazing. And I'm not just saying that because I'm, I'm wearing a yeah. Ping hat. I, right. I genuinely do like like those drivers. But still, that, that was one of the first drivers that has 10K inertia. They just didn't promote it the way that TaylorMade is. It's a bunch right. of what I said earlier, bull junkie. <laughs> yep. But again, it. Feel free to try it, but don't expect that it's gonna. You're gonna see an overnight change. Don't live everything, to the hype. Every everything is different now. Yeah. Then we have our favorite, the Callaway, the smoke, the AI. Why is it called an AI? Because that's the hot word. <laughs> it's the all new Chat GBT driver. Yeah, yeah. I can write yeah. your paper for you. Yeah, it's it. It really is. Uh, it, the AI smoke, uh, AI everything. And I mean, it's, it's really just cliche and it just, I don't know. It's tacky. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't they're really, trying to capitalize on what's hot. I, yeah, yeah, I know. I just can't get behind it. I just can't. Even the putters are, I like the putters, but it's just a putter. I don't really, the reason why I like some of them is because, well, I, I don't know. The color of them are pretty cool. They're like a dark blue. I like, you know, that I like right. darker colored putters. So it's like, I'm going to have a liking to them whether or not, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's funny because people want to define AI or artificial intelligence, but hasn't artificial intelligence or I guess computers <laughs> technology design faces for many years. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it really yeah. is just like I said, cliche and just, uh, I don't know. I cringe. Cringe. Yeah. Our driver, we used computers to mod, to look at the face and, and come up with the amount of uh, uh, basically how thick the face needed to be, where it needed to be, and all that stuff. We did that in 2015. We, we, yeah, we even had the first... Um, uh, Probably one of it was maybe not the first, maybe the second, um, where we uh, 3D printed the face with titanium, and we made it exactly at the absolute legal limit, tw uh, 257 milliseconds off the center. We even made a um, face behind the face driver for Clay Long because he had one called a Gemini that was with KZG. And there was all kinds of issues trying to make it the old fashioned way. So we 3D printed one for them. Um, so we were doing that back in 2015. The only problem was, is the face cost you $700. But the big thing with the, with the Callaway driver, you know, they're showing you all these hot spots. The first thing is, is the driver doesn't fit you if you're hitting it in all those spots. Why are you playing it? That's number one. Number two, if you're swinging it at, say, 80 miles an hour, you don't get, you're not smushing the ball against the face. You're not getting, the, you don't get trampolining because the ball is smushing less. And again, that's all it is. It's not that the face in, goes in and shoots the ball out. It doesn't do that. It just goes in slightly and then the face doesn't deform or the ball doesn't deform against the face quite as much so less energy is lost well if you're not hitting it really 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 hard you're not doing that so the benefit again the legal limit has been established 
Um, I'm curious as to they have it, you know, right dead center, seven yards more. Well, that's because the center of gravity is just slightly above that. Um, my, again, my question that, of course, I'll never get the answer to is at what club head speed were they hitting it? Because in order, again, to make those claims, but I, I you, you got to have the numbers to back it. But my guess is they're swinging it at 120 miles an hour. 125 miles an hour. Um, if I'm going on the freeway, I'm standing on top of my car and we're doing 70, I might be able to get there. But the the idea, the again, the, the number one thing is, is I'm hitting it here consistently. Yeah, yeah. Which, and like I said before the podcast, I mean, why would they promote such a thing as not hitting the center of the club face. The whole the whole preface to golf is to see and there's there's people who don't want to get better than they already are. Yep. They play for fun yep. and leisure, whatever. But they want to hit a good shot, right? And I know they're trying to market it to the people with high handicaps that hit it in the toe or those places on the face that they're promoting high higher numbers. But like you said, most of these guys can't promote the amount or generate the amount of speed to even notice a direct influence from that. And it's, I mean, like I said about the 10 K, it's just a bunch of bull junkie. I mean, really? And uh, yeah, it, I mean, it's, a, it's a measurable number. The question is, is can you achieve that same number? Like I said before, is everybody swinging like a robot? Right. You know, um, many, many years ago, golfsmith Tom Wishon had a set of driver heads, one was for somebody swinging 70 to 80 miles an hour. One was for somebody swinging 85 to 95 miles an hour. Another one was for over 100 miles an hour. And if a 100 mile an hour guy swung the 70 to 80, the face would cave in because it was designed to give that 70 to 80 mile an hour guy a little extra help. But if you swung it harder than that, the face was going to implode. And Again, they have to, they're building the face to withstand 125 miles an hour, you know, minimum. So if you're not near that, you're not going to get the benefit from it. Then we had the dark speed. And this reminded me of the, the Adams tight lies back in the day, back in the late uh, or early 2000s. And they put it in a wind tunnel and have the, when you know showing the how it's so much more aerodynamic but i want you to think for a minute you know the club is coming is going away and is coming into the ball is it in this direction the whole time no it's you know for some of the time it's in this position you know coming through the air and how much more aerodynamic can you make it and how much faster is it going to go you know, again, if it, if it's going to make any difference, it may make a little tiny bit of difference to the higher club head speed guy. But even at that, you know, uh, I, I remember um, seeing some testing numbers. I forgot where the testing numbers came from the, the uh, um, atoms, but I think it, the, the club head was moving at point one mile an hour. Well, take at one mile an hour, you gain 2.8 yards. So at point one mile an hour, you're gaining inches. I don't know that I would notice, wow, I got that one. I nutted that one. It went three inches further. <laughs> but what was interesting about the Adams, all the other drivers are 45 and three quarter inches. Adams has a driver that they call a tour length driver, which is 44 and a half, which tour average is somewhere between 44 and a quarter and 44 and a half, which is probably a little bit longer than most of us should be playing. Most people should be playing 44 inches just to make it easier to hit it on center repeatedly. And you will swing it faster. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing how that comes back. But, you know, again, the, the idea of, you know, that, that they're 
promoting and it's not a big promotion because it's like you look at it on the screen and it's the one down you know in this corner and it says tour length and i was like hmm what's that and that it was it's built shorter now i didn't get i don't remember what the numbers were for swing weight whether they made an adjustment for swing weight or not um but the the big thing guys to remember ladies to remember if you're thinking it's going to change everything and you will now be on tour as a result of this, no, there none of these are going to do that. You need to remember they need to market. It's just like when graphite shafts came out, you're gonna the ball's gonna go fast further and everything else, and then they had to go to marketing. Why did we make it 44 inches? Oh, because bigger arc bigger arc the, the club will go faster well there is a point where that is true but the bigger point was it's lighter weight and if they would have kept it at 43 or 43 and a half and brought the swing weight up by making it a heavier head golfers would have been thrilled but 44 wasn't good enough they went to 45 then they went to 46 and then went for 47 it got to 48 the usga said no you can't do 48 anymore we're going to limit it down to 46 and it then depends on how you measure it and they'll all tell you that this may or may not pass depending on you know because there's variances in the way when the driver head is made and they're, they're cutting the shaft you know, I don't know how close it comes because I don't measure those, you know, whether or not it's going to measure out close to 46 inches or not. But I just found that interesting that they are the only company that I found that is promoting a tour length driver. Right. And it's it's also funny, too, that a lot of the people, uh, I guess, I would say instructors or teachers of golf uh or just people in general that think they know what they're talking about um they say that the longer the longer the driver the further you're going to hit it yeah because of the physics. So it's the opposite yeah. first yeah it's the opposite and uh, like you said it is true to a point where the the arc is is a little bit bigger a little bit wider of an arc and you ha don't have to work as hard to generate stuff uh for hitting the ball far but it's also hitting the center of the club face. And when we shortened my driver length, to I believe it was 44 and a quarter. Yep. And I started hitting instantly more fairways. Yep. And since I was hitting the middle of the club face, yep. I was hitting more Josh fairways. No. Uh, I'm here. Okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, but... I started hitting more fairways on top of me hitting the center of the face. So I was gaining more distance and I'm just a high spin player. So I switched drivers after that because I wasn't getting what I needed to get at. And that's why I was testing drivers because I'm a high spin, I'm a high spin player. So I need something that's a little bit more uh, fit for me as far as low spin and, and that. But the point is, when we shortened my driver and my three wood, I started hitting the center of the face more consistently. And really the swing didn't change at all. No, I just did the same thing that I, that I always did. And you hear all these people talk about, well, these, uh, you know, Martin, whatever his name is, bomber, <laughs> uh, you know, long drive guy. Well, he's got a driver that's, you know, 47 inches, 48 inches. Da, 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 da. And it's like, well, he's also six foot five, and six has, foot six. And if he's a long drive guy, he practices eight hours a day. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and he, a lot of these people that are just. And he has no offense, Joe Schmoes. Yeah. Exactly. Nothing wrong with a Joe Schmo on the golf course. I'm a Joe Schmo, but I you don't see me wanting to do this, that, and the other because such and such right. has it. Or uh, you're going back to the driver situation. You know, I'm not playing a driver because Tiger plays it. Right. Tiger plays the all new QI10. Right. 
Oh my goodness, the world's gonna end. I think the world stops spinning. It's crazy. Better go. Wow. One. Yeah, it's. I'm sorry, but um, I am so glad that uh, you know, I was told early on about what actually matters inside of the club head um, to see through this kind of stuff. And um, yeah, I mean, really, I, I encourage everybody to really boil it down to what length is good for me, particularly longer isn't going to be the way to go unless you're six foot seven and you're playing a 35 inch driver. Yeah. Well, That's and a this problem. guy was playing a 35 and a half inch putter and he was hitting the ball 210. Sure. So, right. Right. And I'm sure he was probably a decent. Old. Yeah, I'm sure he was probably five foot eight, five yeah, foot nine. Seven, six foot. Okay. Yeah. So he's even, even better yeah. of an example. He is still, he's my height and I can't imagine using a 35 inch, but you never know. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's funny. I always, as a kid, when I was probably 13, it's only a couple of years ago. But uh, the kids clubs, mm -hmm. you would have the little baby clubs and me and my friends would be messing around, whatever. We get a baby club and we, we'd hit it in the center of the face mm -hmm. and it'd go. It just wouldn't go very far. Yeah. Cause it was long. So it you get these long. glimpses of shorter clubs doing you better. Yeah. It's just a matter of yeah. what the right length is for you, what shaft you like. Yeah. And the head yeah. really doesn't matter, but what, what well, you like it, seeing down. Yeah, it, it, uh, it matters as far as having the proper loft and the, the proper face angle. But as far as yes, who created that, But it, I mean, I mean, having what type of driver, right, yeah, the do you have a paradigm versus a rogue. There's no right. big difference. Yeah, I'm sorry, there's not. Tour dynamic is probably the best. That's the one we designed. But again, the big thing is I would do test after test every go golfer come in with their 45 46 inch driver and we'd measure their club head speed i'd give them a 44 inch driver and it was faster because mm -hmm. the longer the further the weight is away from your hands the greater the force that you have to hold back the greater the force you have to hold back tendency is as you release it early you release it early mm -hmm. that's where the club head goes the fastest with a wider arc yeah. and it's but, it, and but it's turned turns. down <laughs> Right, right. And, you know, for people at home, kind of little imagery here, picture a racetrack, right? The day, the Daytona, okay? You have a big racetrack, okay? Think about the golf swing and the arc and the racetrack. The smaller the racetrack is, the faster that they look like they're going. But in reality, they're not going any faster. They're going slower than the guys on the bigger racetrack. They're actually working harder, going faster on the bigger racetrack. But they look like it's effortless, right? So the golf swing and the arc is kind of the same right. thing. The smaller the arc. Yeah, you want to create some space. But the thing correct. is, is don't do it with the length of the club. You do that with your correct. arms. Correct. So because I know you got a golf mat meeting to go to and eat some pizza soon. Irons. <laughs> Big thing yes. I learned about irons in 2024, they're all somehow magically getting longer. Standard forever. Again, I use that word guardedly standard, but that would be kind of my, in my brain, the numbers I'm thinking for the normal average golfer who is between five foot eight and six foot three. That guy. 38 inch five iron. Well, now you can get 39 inch five irons. The thing you have to understand, there's kind of this rule that us club fitters who know something know. If you have less than 28 degrees or longer than 38 inches in length, it's hard to hit. And so you got a 21 inch or 21 degree five iron that's 39 inches long. That's hard to hit. Okay. That would have been like, you know, in the back in the day, pulling out your three iron. Well, most people didn't pull out their three iron because it couldn't hit it. So one of the magic things from eight iron going up towards four iron, that's the longest lofted club that they make in irons. They're all getting longer. Who is that good for? Nobody. I probably in a year's time would make 
10, maybe 15 sets where a five iron was longer than 38 inches. Now, I might make the shorter clubs a little longer because you're tall, but I'm not making the longer clubs longer because longer is harder to hit. So why make a longer club that's already long longer so that you can't hit it even a little bit more? That makes no sense. On the At the same time, women's clubs magically are growing. And they're now three-eighths of an inch or so shorter than the average man's club. I don't see that. But but magically, they're especially in the longer clubs, they're making them longer. The other thing is that they've changed. It used to be for decades, half inch from one club to the next. Every once in a while, like when I was dealing with a taller player, I might start off at 38 inches with the five iron and then go down by three eighths of an inch. So that way your wedges are a little bit longer, get you a little bit more upright, a little better posture if you're a taller player or an older player with a weak back. Now they're stepping down three quarters of an inch between clubs, five eighths of an inch between some clubs. Well, that part of the reason for the stepping of the lengths is to change its club head speed changes. Well, now you got all kinds of different lengths. You're going to get all kinds of different gappings. I just look at that and go, wow, why would I do that again? I did that so rarely went over 38 inches, you know, it just, it's so hard to hit that club. And why are you doing it? I don't know. The other thing that of course they had to do is they had to play with loft some more. You get a lot of clubs now where you're, you got two degrees between these two clubs. It used to always be four. Then you got three degrees between some of these clubs and you got four degrees between some of these clubs. And then you get to the wedges and we're going to put five degrees between some of these clubs. Why do I want to be having like a four degree gap? Generally for most average golfers is about a 10 to 12 yard gapping. Why would I want to have 15 yards between my pitching wedge and my A wedge? Am I really good at hitting the A wedge a little bit uh, harder or the pitch taking more off the pitching wedge to get it into that in-between distance? Most golfers, no. Most golfers, I swing the way I swing. Well, if I'm 10 yard, you know, let's say I'm 100 yards out, I use my 110-yard club, I'm 30 feet from the hole. Okay? If I use my... I'm going the other way, instead of uh, using my 100, I don't have a 100-yard club, I have a 95-yard a club, and I have a 108-yard club. Well, I can squeeze it into that area. I can decide, do I want to be a little past, a little short? But now with 15 yards, that's a big gapping. And I don't, I don't know the reason, the rationale for it. The other thing it does is, like, you have five wedges in your bag. You have a pitching wedge, some of them starting at 39 degrees, an A wedge at 44, a gap wedge at 49, a sand wedge at 54, and then if you want a lob wedge on top of that, pretty soon you're going to run out of clubs just carrying your irons because you got that extra wedge in there. So don't understand the, the rationale behind that. Fairway woods, again, they've gotten longer. Yours, I believe we made that at 42 and a quarter. They're now 40, three woods now are 43 and a quarter. Again, an extra inch makes it a little bit easier to hit. No, makes it a lot harder to hit. Um, hybrids used to be like um, when I first started making hybrids, they were a three iron hybrid. You know, the one to replace the three iron was like a half an inch longer than the three iron. Well, of course, now we don't even have a three iron, but now they're up to almost 41 inches for a three iron hybrid. That's getting long. Makes it increasingly more challenging to hit. Why? I don't know. But guess what? There's a tour length version that you can get from Cobra, which is a half an inch shorter. So again, it just, it, 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 to me, it, it becomes mind boggling. But the big thing that golfers, I, I hope that you, you're catching from us, is how important it is to get fit. You know, 
uh, I was thinking about, okay, where do you start? If you're starting, if you're thinking about, I want to do something new this year. Well, you either start with your irons or you start with the driver. And the reason for that is because of the weights of the shafts. There's a, we talked about that in one of the earlier podcasts. There is a progression from one to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. You know, if I had, I was thinking, okay, well, how to explain this? Got an, an aggressive swinging person. Okay. Got a pretty quick tempo. You know, what am I thinking as a fitter? Well, the first thing I'm thinking, I'm, I've measured his clubs. I know what he has. He's got a set of traditional um, store bought clubs. Swing weight is at D2. You know, um, um, the flex may be fine, may not be fine. I'm not worrying about the flex right now. What I'm looking at is, you know, what is he able to do with those? Is he able to, you know, what I would see often is, you know, with that quick tempo, balance issues. Well, why was there balance issues? Well, maybe because there wasn't enough, you know, in the modern club today, a lot of clubs, the weight of the shafts are like 90 grams. Well, that's fine for us old people, but you get some young guy like, you know, swinging really, really strong swing and he needs like 120 grams. So you you start looking at where does that starting point need to be? And how much head weight do they need to have in order for them to, you know, be able to swing through the, the club? But usually when people become off balance, it's because they're over swinging the club. Why are they over swinging it? Because there's no resistance. They don't feel enough there. They don't know where the club head is. So, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, getting fit or whatever, you know, listen to our next episode. Because we're going to have uh, Doug from Tennessee. He's going to be hopefully back from his trip um, out of the snow. And he's going to talk to us about we we went through a fitting. Unlike uh, I was on when I was doing research, um, I was asked if I wanted to do a fitting over the phone. I thought that was interesting. Um, we exchanged many. He sent me many videos of his swing. I We talked probably four or five hours on the phone. He's, I sent him demo clubs. He sent me back clubs and information. I sent him back clubs. We went back and forth. It took us about two and a half months. And he played one round just after getting having COVID when it was like 40 something degrees. And he said, well, those clubs felt really heavy. Well, of course you've been sick for whatever, you know, weeks and it's cold and everything else. So he went out the next time and played and he had made, uh, had five birdies. I think he, I think he said he hit 16 great greens in regulation and his putting let him down. I didn't help him with his putting, um, <laughs> but, but it was interesting, you know, and he's going to tell us the story of what he's gone through looking for this. He, he has played um, sports at a very high level. He's going to talk to us about what did he learn and what is he still learning. And, and he, is one of those people that really wants to understand more about the why. And I think that's so important for golfers to understand the why. I don't buy a, a, a new driver because I'm killing it at the store, hitting it into the computer screen. And I don't know that they have the altitude set at 10,000 feet. And there's a 40 mile an hour breeze at my back and it's 147 degrees outside, you know, so the big thing is, is understanding the why. If you're hitting something better, why? Because it could be this one time I did and the next 42 times I can't. Yes. So that's where we're going to be going in our next episode. But I, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about what's out there. Give you a heads up of what to be looking for and what to be thinking about. Gene, that was awesome. Um, a lot of great things touched on today. And uh, hopefully our viewers uh, got something valuable uh, out of this episode. I know I did. Um, in this episode, especially for me, I did a lot more background research just because I have a lot of, I guess, 
people that I am associated with that are very uh, hyped about these new clubs coming out. And I've had to do the research on my own just to have some credible references to back my claims. But at the same time, just to get a better understanding of what these companies are actually trying to promote to their customers and their market. And um, props to them. Their marketing team is doing a great job because a lot of people are buying it. Yep. But at the same time, um, it's also a matter of misinformation that's being spread around to golfers. And I feel that is something that is not touched on a lot. Uh, with, especially with the new demographic of golfers that we have. Um, there has been a huge yep. influence in social media with golfers. So we have a lot more golfers and um, figured that we would give you guys that information just to have it. Cause I certainly wish that I had it uh, when I was starting out. Um, and a lot of people don't get the privilege to get that. And uh, I'm very grateful um, to have Gene help me along the way. And I'm glad that I'm learning it all now. And I'd rather share it with you guys uh, sooner rather than later. So once again, thank you guys yep. for tuning into this episode. I can't wait to speak with Doug about his experience with Gene and his club fitting experience. I think that's going to be awesome just to kind of have somebody else other than me who mm -hmm. uh, has been fitted by Gene um, to give our feedback uh, and our real experience um, to you guys and you guys build off of that and take it however you want. Other than that, Gene, thank you so much for tonight, and I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, have a slice of pizza for me. I will. And God, I will. And God bless, and have a great night. And are you going to be out at Las Colinas playing behind me? I will be at Colinas tomorrow, and we'll get back at the grind. It's early, early bird special. That's what we're doing oh, you're tomorrow. Real early? Uh, no, I don't know. I think I'm probably just going to go uh, in the morning. We have a little practice at twelve. I might oh, okay. wake up early in the morning and and. You know, do some stuff beforehand, do some putting and short game. So just don't hit into me. I, we're, I think we're 12, 18. We won't. Okay. God bless. Take care. Take care.